Man, what a great day to be alive. Man, it's a good day to be watching the Cameron K podcast, ain't it? Yeah, I'm well, dang. It is. What's going on, y'all? We're back. Episode 73 now. Getting up there. So, we're a couple games into the finals, and baseball, the regionals are done. Getting on the Super Regionals. Uh, one step closer to Omaha, and both of our teams are left. But we'll get into that later. We're going to talk about the finals first. Well, actually, we'll talk about the coaches because all the – it's insane. They're like uh, – it's like trading cards or something with uh, NBA coaches because they're just like, yeah. all right, we'll fire you, and he'll just go get this job. And then, But, uh, yeah, Nick Nurse signs to the 76ers. So, got rid of Doc for a nurse. Yep. So, uh, Monty Williams signs with the Pistons, which this one's interesting because he has a chance to be the highest-paid coach of all time. Wow. With this deal. So it's, he signed a six-year, 78.5 mil. But there's something in like the contract where it, if if something happens, he will be the highest-paid NBA coach of all time. So a little over $10 million a year? Yeah. I, wait, that's not right. Yeah, I don't know. Over $10 million a year, though. It's yeah, it's something like crazy. that. Crazy. And uh, Frank Vogel to the Suns. So uh, the head coach of the Lakers in 2020 got the ring. Yep. And now he's going... I mean, you can't ask for a better franchise to walk into. You got Phoenix. You got Literally, Kevin everything's Durant. there for you. Yeah. You just got to get a couple role players and you're good. Yep. And you're chilling. You got a chance at the finals. Um, but yeah, so into the finals. Game one. Uh, Jokic. Triple-double. Stop me if you've heard that Under- before. <laughs> I was going to say, understandable. Yeah. Um, second player to ever do that in their finals debut. I don't remember who the first was. Uh, but yeah, I mean... What more? Like, it, it was expected. It was like, Jokic, yeah. big stage, he's going to show up. Um, and the Heat break the record in that game for the least amount of free throws in a playoff game in NBA history. Can't Two win a game free like throws. That. Yeah. Yeah, that's really bad. And that's, it feels like, uh, for the most part, the Heat this whole postseason have been at, at the, the line. line. Like, the whole time. Uh, so, yeah, it's been weird. Like, especially in that game, just like seeing them, just not a chance of them. I don't even remember who was at the line either. It was just two free throws, though. Um, but, yeah, Caleb Martin and Max Struess were the story of that game. They combined for one for 17 in game one. That's horrible. Yeah. Especially after Caleb Martin, all the talk of him being, like, the co-Eastern uh, Conference Finals MVP. Yeah. And then you're going to back it up with game one. That's awful. Dude, that's, like, honestly so bad. Like, you have to try to do that. <laughs> yeah, you gotta you got to purposely be messed like that. But, I mean... Yeah, obviously, and the crazy part is they were still in it because yeah. even late they had a they had that little run and got it within like ten. With they ended up losing by like thirteen, I think. But I mean, yeah, the Heat still played well outside of those two, just trying their absolute best to give Denver yeah. game one. Uh, and Jimmy had thirteen in that game, so that was his lowest in a game this postseason. Isn't this the first series that uh, the Heat dropped game one? Because haven't they stole game one every series? Yeah, yeah, and then, uh, yeah, and the Nuggets had, I don't know, yeah, the Nuggets had, like, that was uh, continuing to protect home court, so it was like, something was going to, like, either the Heat were going to keep their streak of yeah. winning game one, or the Nuggets were going to keep their streak of, like, uh, protecting home court, so it was kind of like a, someone was going to protect their streak of something, but yeah. the Nuggets got it done, uh, and I mean, they just played well, like, they did, uh, and, like, they have the whole... Playoffs. Yeah, and Jamal had like twenty six. There was like everybody was just scoring for him. They didn't score a ton. Uh, like they didn't score their one hundred and forty or whatever they usually have. But yeah, um, but yeah, game two, the Heat uh, take game two. So that found was the, the that was crazy. Found the answer. Yeah, they found the recipe. Um, and honestly, the change was made by saying Jokic, go ahead, score a hundred points. And then, uh, honestly, like that, it worked because they were just yeah. like, Jokic, go ahead and score. And then he scored 41, I think, but had four assists. So it's kind of like, he's just so good at passing, you'd rather him score. Yeah. And uh, it was, I think they're 0-3 in the postseason with Jokic scoring 40, 40 or more. So, I yeah. mean, maybe that's, they, maybe that's the secret. They found the answer, and honestly, if I was the Nuggets, I would be a little scared. Yeah, because, because you've got to figure out something quick. Yeah, because to be honest, Jimmy Butler, I feel like, hasn't played his best games the first game one and two. Like, yeah, they lost, and Jimmy's not playing his best, and they 
figured out how to slow down Jokic, or not slow him down, but slow him down, implementing uh, somebody else. Yeah. I think that's how the Nuggets really killed everybody is because, you know, Jokic would do his thing, you know, double-double, and then passing-wise, he would, you know, get Jamal Murray going or yeah, whoever. Any any type of back cut or something. Like, yeah. somebody was open yeah. all the time. Uh, yeah, so how much do you think it weighs on – Jimmy's like lack of playing unreal. Uh, how much do you think that weighs on like his injury? Like, mm-hmm. do you think it's because of the injury, or you think he's just kind of like sitting back and he's like, I ain't even got to do nothing crazy. Like, <laughs> no, I just think that he plays so well as a team. Honestly, yeah. Uh, like, I mean, so he they just proved doesn't it. have to. Yeah, I feel like it's more like, dude, I don't have to do this all myself. Like, I have a team, which is understandable, but I feel like Jimmy hasn't played his best. Yeah. It's going to be scary when he does. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If I was the Nuggets, I think I would be a little nervous. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that, that game uh, brought us the third quarter of Jokic where he scored. I don't remember what he had at halftime, but in the third he had, I think, 18 all in the third. He was just eating Cody Zeller alive. Yeah. So, Cody Zeller was in shambles. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I don't even see him like he, – he will only see the floor when Bam is, like, dead yeah. in game three. Yeah. Um, but then the fourth quarter heat, which I don't remember the stat, but they have like an insane number of just being like, when they're down, they're like, they it, it, they they're like top five all time in like the most comebacks in a playoff run or something of down ten points or more or something like that. And then uh, in the fourth, they're plus ninety in their scoring uh, for the playoff so far. So it's just like insane numbers. Like yeah. it, it's just. A comeback team, and like and that's what they did in the fourth quarter. Like the whole team just went went crazy. Um, and then Duncan Robinson also ten in the fourth. He had his own, I think eight zero run, uh, and then he was flexing. Like honestly, <laughs> the layup that he had where he got fouled, get the and one, and he like flexed. I was like, Duncan, <laughs> what is it? What's this guy doing? Are you got okay, it, man? Yeah, what's going on, man? And yeah, he had uh, he had ten points in the fourth. I don't even think he scored before the fourth. Uh, but without him, they don't win that game. And yeah, he was mean mugging, uh, flexing like. They like, came out of nowhere. Yeah, like it's like oh, that's a three point shooter, Duncan Robinson. And then he's just out here driving, cutting, crazy finishes. Like, I mean, you love love to see it. Yeah, definitely a different side of Duncan Robinson than what we're used to. Yeah, and and the craziest stat of all was this was the first time the Heat have won a game in Denver since November 30th, 2016. Seven so, years ago. Yeah. Well, six and a half. Yeah. That's an, that's an unreal, like, streak of not winning a game there, though. Like, yeah, it's in the Western Conference. You play them, I don't remember, like, I think you play Western Conference teams twice, maybe, home and away. Maybe. But, like, so you yeah. play there every year, but, like, not winning any in Denver since then, like, man, Nuggets have been taking it personal. But, yeah, yeah I mean, they, they broke that. So, also something to note in this game, uh, the Nuggets lacked a little bit of effort. And you could tell from the post game that uh, players and coaches weren't happy because Jeff Green dropped an F-bomb in his post game. So, he, he's taking a fine for it. Uh, and he said, <laughs> this is the effing finals, uh, and we've got guys not giving it their all. Uh, that, <coughs> that's just an issue. And, I mean, he went on a whole spiel about it. but He's not wrong. Yeah, not wrong. And Jeff Green, the old head, uncle, Uncle Jeff Green, he knows. He's seen a couple things. Yeah. Um, And then head coach Mike Malone, this is the NBA Finals, and we're talking about effort. That's a huge concern of mine. Yeah, it's a little late. Yeah. Yeah, it's – this is the last place you want to be dealing with effort. Uh, But I do think – I do think they'll bounce back because, obviously, game three and four in Miami – um. Honestly, well, it's now that the uh, Heat have taken the home court advantage, they can honestly drop one and then it's just back to normal. But if the Heat take these two, man, that'd be huge. It would be insane. Like, I, uh, I mean, Jimmy, the whole off season talk, him just saying I'll, I'll take the next one. Like, all the talk, I mean, it'd be backed up if they get both those because like three one. I mean, the Nuggets if anybody could do it. But if they take both these home games, it would be different. Yeah. The Heat wins this series. Do you think this is, like, one of the best underdog stories in NBA history? Yeah. I would say 
Well, it was either the 98 or 99 Knicks. Um, but I don't think they won. They were an eight seed that went to the finals. And then, I guess if you're talking underdog, like 2016 Cavs were underdogs. and uh, True. So that one. But this would be right up there with those. Because an eight seed, all these undrafted guys, your highest draft pick on your roster right now is Cody Zeller and he barely plays. <laughs> Yeah, it would have to be. It had to be in a conversation yeah. for the. Well, we talked about it before. The 2016 Cavs, what they did was unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Like that. beating a Warriors team like that is like three to one. Yeah. Greatest record in NBA history. Like, yeah, that one was crazy. Yeah, I just feel like the Heat is just like this is wild to me. Yeah, it's crazy to see, and it's like it's so weird because like obviously you get the seating based off what you did in the regular season, and Jimmy's not the same in the regular season. Players just don't play the same. They're just good. And it's yeah. like nobody saw it coming because they're an eight seed. Like, they were down five points with five minutes to go in their play-in game. Like, they almost didn't even make the playoffs. And now they're in the finals and took a road game. Like, it, it's just a, an insane story Yeah, to think about. But uh, quick Kentucky basketball because y'all know that's my team. And I talked about it a couple weeks ago in my selling stock. We're in, like, shambles right now because we have the greatest recruiting class we've probably ever had coming in, but nobody around them. Uh, we're bringing back two players that played. One of them played, like, five minutes after December. So, like, we have no experience at all. We couldn't even run a five-on-five practice right now without using three walk-ons. Uh, but, yeah, and <clears throat> obviously the deadline, I think, was last Wednesday. Uh, and Oscar stayed, Chris stayed, uh, but Antonio Reeves was the question. So he announced he's returning to college, but he didn't say Kentucky. So it was like, oh, he might be transferring. But it's because he wants this NIL promise of like a certain amount of money, he wants a certain like playing time. From Kentucky? Yeah, Antonio Reeves. Uh, you think Kentucky gives it to him? I don't know. Cal, Cal don't promise it. So like, that's why we've missed out on all these recruits because we won't be like, okay, you'll get this much money. What'd you say? You'll make a lot of money, dude. If Cal just wasn't like stuck in these old like ways, like the NIL, yeah, you know, sometimes we don't agree with it, but it's today. Like this is what's happening. You got to figure out how to use the system to your advantage. Yeah, and it, honestly, the funniest part about it all is that people used to say Cal cheated, paid players. It's literally legal now, and he's not paying <laughs> players. So like. Obviously, he that is was, a very solid point. He was never cheating because he can literally do it now, and he won't. Yeah. So um, I bet that's why he's not. I bet he wants to prove a point. I I don't know what it. Is. I I know it. He says that he do, he doesn't do it because uh, he doesn't want players coming for the wrong reason. Like he doesn't want Kentucky. He doesn't want a guy coming here because of the money. It's respect. So like he's like you're coming here because it's Kentucky. You want to get to the NBA. You want to play for championships. I don't want you here because you want the price tag or something like. So I, I like it, but it's it doesn't well, I, work. Yeah, so I didn't know. Like, I didn't know he said that. Yeah, much. Hey, coming from a Tennessee fan, much respect to Cal. I like that. Yeah, I, I like that mindset, and I wish that you know worked. But <laughs> that and that mindset will work with high school recruits because they're only going to be here one year anyways. They're yeah. going to the league, but those transfers they may never see the NBA for. So like they're trying to get the money while they can. Just so think like, about how good it would feel though, like not using the Nile money. Y'all go like one. A ship or something like yeah, we just did that. Yeah, Cal would like, be. Cal just did that. Cal would be talking. He'd be like, "Hey, y'all, use y'all nil money." <laughs> but um, <clears throat> yeah. So to put it into perspective, there's been eight players in Kentucky history score 37 or more in a true road game, and Antonio Reeves is one of those eight. That's a guy you got to get back because he, there's rumors of him going to Memphis because of nil. We can't just let this dude walk. To this is Memphis. Yeah, and he did this at Arkansas. That's possibly the toughest environment in the SEC to play in, and he's just doing that. Like you can't just let this guy go. Yeah, he was our best player at the end of the year, um, and it all comes down to NIL. So, guarantee him what he needs. We ain't getting nobody else. Like, it, it's just a, a tough situation. So yeah, at some point you have to implement NIL. Yeah, you just have to use it to your advantage. Like you all have done it. Phenomenally, like in every sport, Miami. Miami's honestly they've done too much. They they like pay way. <laughs> they get stupid, but 
They're, they're, they honestly just went from being a college to being just an NBA team because they're just like, here's like a billion dollars. Just be, just commit to Basically Miami. Basically a whole NBA contract. Yeah. Yeah. So Miami, I guess they do it okay. A&M, I mean, they, Nick Saban didn't like it, but like they were kind of, they were doing it legally. So like there's all these schools that you can tell recruiting is gone stupid. Yeah. And they're doing it legally. Like it's, it's allowed and we're this just is, sitting here. Yeah. This is waiting. what people were afraid of too. Going to schools for the wrong reason, and yeah. uh, I don't know. Yeah, that, that's what what scares me is how college sports are looking. Yeah, because uh, I think the biggest issue is that transfer portal and NIL were thrown in at the same time, and you had no idea how either worked. So now guys are transferring. They're like, all right, just give me the money, and then it's like, well, I mean, I guess I guess you have to because like that's you're not going to get players, and then and they can just transfer yeah. again. So. Yeah, it's just players, a bad spot. Yeah. If players have any doubt about going to the league, like they're transferring, going for the most money possible. Yeah. And that's why we didn't get Hunter Dickinson because he – and he openly said that. He was like, Kansas gave me the most money. Yeah. And he was like, ah, just in case I don't get to play in the league, I went to the school that's giving me the most money and a good opportunity. Dude, see, that's just like, – this is going to change college sports so much. So much. Yeah. I, I mean, I, if I was a player, I mean, yeah, I would – I'd be honest, I'd probably go to the money too. Like we talked about it last podcast. Uh but dude is college sports is it's gonna be different. Yeah. In in the future. Forever. The next couple of years, yeah. Um but if there's a positive part of it, there are two recruits still left that have decommitted from their schools that we are in the running for right now. Both one commits when y'all are watching this, he'll commit the day of. So he commits tomorrow, Wednesday the seventh. And then the other one uh, doesn't have a commitment day, but he's going on a visit this week. Uh, Jordan Burks is the one that commits tomorrow. He was an Ole Miss commit until Kermit Davis got fired and he decommitted. He was in the overtime elite league like Robert Dillingham was and the Thompson Twins that will both be top ten picks this year. And he led overtime elite in points per game. He averaged 27 points per game in that league. So that's just a bucket. Yeah. You'll gladly take that guy. He's like 6'9", wing, forward type. He can shoot, athletic. He's a three-star, but just from what I've looked at, like on YouTube, Twitter, like all these different things, people are like, Jordan Burks is the most underrated player in the And an overtime elite. That's like... Yeah. That's saying something. That's competition. That's getting draft picks every year. Uh, So, yeah, I'm excited. Hopefully we get him. And then the other one is Joey Hart. Uh, He's just a, a shooter. So he's... Uh, he was coming to UCF. Uh, he's from Indiana, but he's kind of like a CJ Frederick for those of y'all that know who that is. Like, kind of a CJ Frederick type player. So if he can stay healthy, um, I think it, I think shooting will translate no matter mm-hmm. if you're a good shooter. It's going to translate to college anyway. So like, he's not a guy that's going to be helpful right away. But like next year, year after, like this guy's going to be good. So th- those two are the biggest names right now. And then the last one is. Samoto Surreal. So he played on Rob Dillingham's team in Overtime Elite. Uh, and then he's the class of 24, but we're, there's talks that he might commit to Kentucky and reclassify for this year. So he would be the he'd probably be our starting center right away. Hmm. Uh, if not, he'd be the backup and play a ton of minutes. So he's, I think he's the number one center in the class of 24. So he would be a huge get also. Um, but yeah, and it, all this, all this to say, this will this season will be the test if Cal's system really works still, because it's been it's been a while since we've gone with that whole freshman method where it's the whole freshman team, uh, and I think we're probably the only team that's doing it this year. So Duke ain't doing it like they usually do. Kansas ain't like no, nobody else is doing all freshmen. They're doing transfers, couple freshmen here and there. We're going straight freshmen, like all new faces, everything. So we'll see. This is we'll it. See if it if it works still. Because um, there's a lot of people that believe that it's kind of like gotten to the age of you have to have transfers, and there's these fifth year guys that are the most important pieces. Yeah. So we'll we'll see this season. Um, but getting into college baseball, so the regionals, we talked about it last week. Um, Wake Forest was the number one uh, going into it. They make it through uh, pretty easily. I, yeah. I didn't watch them because I'm not going to watch Wake Forest baseball until the Supers. Uh, but Kentucky baseball, so uh, we talked about it. We played Ball State game one. I think that was Friday. Um, scored a couple runs late. No, made it look worse than what it was. But all around, good game. Game two, 
Um, you watched this when we were talking during it. Yo. Indiana. We were up 3-1, bottom of the seventh, and then Indiana uh, gets a home run. And then there's an ejection on that home run. So he gets a home run. Uh, and then, obviously, Miami, they have, like, the turnover chain, all these, like, props now. Yeah. Um, they bring out a chain for the home run on the field. Uh, and then... Uh, so you can't bring props onto the field. It's like just an NCAA rule. So then they look at it, they kick the guy out, and so he he went to the bullpen at first just to hang out back there, and they're like, no, you have to get out of the stadium. <laughs> so what do you what do you think about that? Like the ejection and all of that. Oh, uh, I mean, hey, rules are rule. I know he's just excited celebrating all the way out of the bullpen. Like have to leave, leave. That's maybe a little extreme. Maybe it feels like a fight. Yeah. Or something like that, but for that, no. Yeah. I mean, because if you look in the rule book, it's like out of the stadium, like, but, I mean, yeah, the, out of the bullpen seemed a little excessive. I don't understand that, out of the stadium. Like, what? Like, what is that going to change? Yeah, it doesn't do anything. Maybe if somebody's, like, raging, like, trying to fight everybody, maybe. Yeah. Then you can understand it. Or but, it started, like, two brawls or something, but, yeah. like, I don't, I don't get the... Completely have to leave. Like, that makes no sense. Yeah, that doesn't really add up to me. But, hey, I mean, they brought the chain out to home plate, basically. Gave it to him. Come on, Indiana. Got to be smarter than that. Check yeah, the rule book, man. Got to, yeah. Got to know better. Got to um, be disciplined. So then, the the most interesting part of the game was uh, the ninth. So we were down, I think we were down 5-3. Uh, or no, on a, I think we might have been... Yeah, we were down 5-3. Two runners on. And then we hit one to right uh, that is at the top of the wall. Guy catches it. Look, looked perfect. Looked gone. And that one uh, obviously caught. So that was the second out. Then there's runners on second and third, I believe. And we get one of our best hitters up. I think it was Walshmitt. And he hits an absolute bomb down the left field line. Barely foul. Yeah. Looked was a good. bomb. Look good live. I, I started like, texting you. I was like, dude. I was losing my mind. Because <laughs> we both said, we were like, dude, that looked good live. Oh, Because you said, oh, dang, Kentucky getting robbed. And I was yeah. like, yeah. But ended up being foul, and then he, he flies out, so we lose that one. So that slides us to the loser's bracket. Um, and then we beat West Virginia 10 nothing. make a statement, because they were complaining about the dorms. Yeah. Um, and then we play Indiana again. Uh... So at this point, before um, game four, we had been hit by Indiana nine times in that season. So, oh, dude, I've seen or that. In, in that. In that game, it was uh, nine times. So that was yeah. the Sunday night. That was Sunday night game. So we got hit nine times in that game. One guy got hit three times in the same game. Which is just unreal. So dude, at this point, be crowding the plate or something. Yeah. Or just... I don't know. Indiana is just bad. Yeah, hey, it's a little beef, man. I, I guess because, uh, but yeah, at this point, obviously we had to beat them twice. So this was the the Sunday night game. Um, but yeah, prior to the final game, Indiana had hit uh, twenty Kentucky batters in twenty four innings. So them dudes just hate us or something. Uh, <laughs> That's crazy. We just refused to move, though. I mean, we gonna wear them. Hey, free base. Hey, tough. Yeah, free it's base. SEC, man. Yes. Yeah, hey, welcome. Welcome to SEC. Uh, then game five, the Cats win four to two, highest attendance in school history. I think it was six thousand nine hundred and. No, nah, I don't even know. It, it was it was a, cra- a crazy number because we broke the record Saturday uh, in attendance, and then we broke it again mm-hmm. yesterday. I promise you. Yeah, I, I was at the game. I don't think you could fit anybody else in that stadium. It, it was, was it was jumping, <clears throat> jumping. Uh, awesome environment, um, and we advance to the first super regional since 2017, second time in school history. Just awesome time to be a cat. And hey, on, honestly, I know y'all remember at the beginning of the season we were ranked 14th in the SEC. Got moved up to 13th in the second week. And I said, eat it, Mississippi State. Because I was like, ah, we'll probably be hanging out down here. Here we are going to the Supers. And it's just, what, what a time. What a time to be a, a Kentucky fan. But the story is Mason Moore. So his regional numbers, he pitched in two games. He went 2-0. and Pitched 10 innings, four hits allowed, 
Zero runs allowed, seven strikeouts. That's a dog. That's a dog. Yeah, so he's really the story. He, he kind of carried a little bit. Uh, but, yeah, so he, he replaced Darren Williams, which, um, I mean, honestly, you, you get chills. So, like, after the game, Coach Mingione uh, was talking about Darren Williams. So it was his seventh year this year. He started out at EKU, transferred. And when he, when he transferred to uh, UK, he was on his visit. And he didn't ask about NIO or anything like that. He said, what would it take to host a regional? And that was his, that was his only question. Going into last year, he tore something in his arm, and there was a chance that he'd never play baseball again. And they almost guaranteed he wouldn't ever pitch again. And then Coach Minge brought on his kid, and he said, this little seven-year-old prayed for you every night right by my bed. And I heard him praying for you every night, Darren. And then uh, so Darren was able to pitch. In this Game 7 scenario of the uh, regionals hosted at UK, and he's uh, part of what's taken us to our second regional, or super regional in school history. So, wow. Darren Williams is just the story. But, yeah, Mason Moore dominated Darren Williams. He, he actually started the game yesterday, too. So, um, yeah, big shout-out to him. And I need your opinion on this. So, Indiana. So, Obviously, if y'all are like old heads, you know Kentucky and Indiana have had this beef in basketball for like decades, and like it's been since like the fifties that we've just hated each other. Now I can't stand these dudes in baseball. <laughs> so these guys, uh, I don't remember what day it was, but they put cameras up out in the outfield to be able to watch our practices and get our signs. That just seems, you know, a little bit of an Sketchy. issue. Sketchy. Yeah, and then they got caught in the act. So we were like, dude. What are you doing? Get get out of here. So then uh, all of that happened. And then after this game, they want to uh, complain. So I showed you the video. Uh, the Kentucky players go uh, around the field, give all the like little kids high fives and stuff. And then they go up to Indiana's dugout, go to shake hands. And Indiana players just say, no, there's not going to shake hands. These dudes are some what babies. What's wrong with these dudes? Yeah. And, it, I mean, yeah, you like – they're probably a little upset that they went around the field first and then just shake the hand. Like, like dude, you lost. Yeah. They're a good team. Good team. You know, just win. And and you don't have to pout about it. Uh, but, yeah. Indiana, y'all suck. So, enjoy the ride back to uh, Bloomington. Place sucks, too. Um, <laughs> but for this, I'm going to give some praise to Coach Minge because on the podcast last year, I was like, got to fire him. Get him out of here. It was kind of like a, they brought him back. Everybody in the program apparently had trust in him. So I was like, you know what? Let's ride. Let's see how it goes. We'll probably suck. Do or die year, and he, he gets it done. So um, it was just one an electric year. There, it felt like every week we were talking about it, it was like another stat broken. Record year. Um, and then after the game, he was just thanking Big Blue Nation. and like. So now he's been to two Super Regionals under him. Um and then his his final quote, basically his drop the mic thing, was uh, praise the Lord and go Cats. So I'm going to need that on a T-shirt ASAP. Praise uh, the Lord. But, yeah, it, it was it was an electric environment. Uh, we we watched some of the highlights and stuff together. And, like, KPP, Kentucky Proud Park, rocking. Just an awesome environment. But Yeah. Yeah, so Tennessee, Tennessee also. Tennessee, the baseballs, man. Uh, pretty exciting. <laughs> Uh, regionals, we uh, we went undefeated. Very exciting. So we beat Charlotte uh, in game one. And then game two. Hey, you were nervous about Charlotte, too. You were like, I, I was. Like they... I was like, I feel like they're like a sleeper team. Like, they just hit bombs. I don't know. But we got past Charlotte. And game two, big game. Yeah. This game had me even more nervous than Charlotte. Uh because before the same started, I was like, we beat Charlotte. Like, we're playing Clemson. Yeah. It's just how it is. Because <clears throat> what was uh, that, Lipscomb? Was the fourth team? I think so, yeah. Um, so, game two went into 14 innings. Unreal. Yeah. Uh, Clemson almost won this game in the bottom of the 10th. Bases loaded. There was a big strikeout from, from the man. Uh, so, there was one out now. Bases loaded. Then they hit into a double play. That was originally ruled uh, safe at first, which would have won them the game. But then Tony V, hey, coach, was like, nah. Then I saw some. Replay, like, recheck that. They rechecked it. 
Saw that he was out. He was out. Around. He was. Even live, I thought he was out. Uh, it was close. Hey, but. first base on. Had money on Clemson, bro. Hey, I mean, he, um, I guess. Hey, respect. Trying to get his bag. I get it, man. <laughs> He's a bag chaser. You, you gotta, you gotta call it how it is. <laughs> yeah, but so we get past game two, uh, or we ended up winning game two. I mean, uh, after fourteen innings, so that was um, that oh, was crazy. Real. Electric game. Yeah. Like crazy. That was that was awesome. Yeah. So Charlotte comes back. We play them again. Game three. We ended up beating them nine to two. So we go to super regionals. Easy, no, on, no sweat. I think this is your three f- years in a row now. I think we've uh, won regions. So I think is it, it's it two like or a three. Fifth, fifth time going to super regionals. Yeah, or something. yeah. And it's like I said, two or three have been in the last like two or three years. Um, and something cool about the SEC uh, part of it is. There's already guaranteed two SEC teams in Omaha because we play LSU, and then Florida plays South Carolina, I think. Yeah. So like, no matter what happens, there's two. And then Alabama's in there too, right? Uh, I don't even remember. I know there's, um, so what? Us, you all, LSU. There's six total. Florida, South Carolina. Pretty sure Alabama's in there. Arkansas didn't make it. I know that. Yeah, they. Uh, Dang it! Who are we missing? Uh, Arkansas lost the uh, TCU. I know. Yeah, Alabama's in there. Yeah. Yeah. So, six SEC teams. That's unreal. If 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 like we have half of Omaha, you'll never hear the end of it. Yeah. The SEC is just those dudes. <laughs> Um, so yeah, let's do some stocks of the week. So, um, for me, I'm buying stock in, you can see my excitement when I sent this to you, Netflix, because they're bringing Swamp Kings. Respect. This is going to be awesome. Uh, the 06 through 09 Florida Gators, obviously, Tim Tebow, like a, a, a preacher basically, with a few murderers on the team, and Urban Meyer is the head coach, Cam Newton out here stealing laptops. <laughs> Uh, as the backup, you got Percy Harvin. Like, this is going to be uh, the best documentary ever. I guess it's going to be awesome. I hope Netflix doesn't let us down. Yeah. And honestly, it's a sad thing to think about. Like, there there won't be people that, in it that can even, like, talk about it because, like, Aaron Hernandez, obviously, he can't be there to talk about it. Like, Tim Tebow, he'll probably just avoid talking about stuff. Like, yeah, I can't see Tim touchy, Tebow really uh, talking about it. It's going to be a touchy, touchy topic. I think it's going to be more just. Somebody saying what happened. Yeah. Not like somebody from the actual Florida team. You know Cam Newton going to spill all the beans though. He's like, man, <laughs> yeah. no, I remember uh, Urban said, said I played I play a girl or something my first day. Like He's going to say something <laughs> crazy. Uh, yeah, he'll he'll talk. Well, we know that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I just hope I hope Tim talks enough. Um, but I don't know who, who's doing it, but if it's the same people that have done the uh, – the uh, Malice the Palace, the Manta Teo, like all those, uh, which I know they're doing the Johnny Manziel one. So I, I, those same people, they've done phenomenal on Dude. all of them so far. So I'm excited. Wait, the Johnny Manziel one, is that one being? Yeah, uh, that's releasing like later this year too, I think. Dude, I can't. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> that one's going to be awesome. But the Manta Teo one was sick. Solid. Too. Yeah. Yeah. And the the name for the Florida team of this documentary, Swamp Kings, that's just sick. Yeah, Swamp Kings is it. It makes me think of uh, genius. that uh, Gator show. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, oh, the uh, one during like COVID? Maybe. Uh, <laughs> swamp People or something? Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh, Swamp People it was like when we were kids. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Swamp People. Um. Mm. Yeah, this one uh, I'm I'm watching it all that night. Yeah, the second it comes out, it comes out. I, I'm I'm there. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Who 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 got buying stock in? So this week I got Ellie De La Cruz. Y'all have heard the name? Top prospect. Top prospect in MLB today. Um, on the Red Squad, so that's huge. Uh, coming from Reds fans. Yeah, well, uh, I mean we've talked about him on here before. Yeah. The greatest baseball player of all time, basically. He's already doing great things. First uh, career hit uh, came tonight, actually, against the Dodgers. Hit a gap shot to right center for a double. 
Yeah, go ahead and save them some time. Go ahead and put them in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. You cowards. Yeah. Do it. I'm and, sure. I want to buy stock. You know, that's for this. But uh, Red's program is known for, uh, or Red's franchise is known for farming players. So we'll see how long uh, see how long he stays. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe over under six months. <laughs> um, but, yeah, buying stock in Red's baseball, obviously. Yeah. Like, and they beat the Dodgers tonight. So we're only the Reds are only like four and a half games behind uh, the Pirates. Yeah, and the Pirates have had their like win sanity year. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so man, we yeah, Maddie McClutch hit that that bomb tonight, walk yeah. off. So the Reds, man. I mean, I don't I don't know the the streak, but we just had like a five game winning streak uh, before we lost like one of the games to. The Mets, maybe. I don't know. It was like a five-game winning streak against. Oh, it was on the road at Milwaukee. There was we won this. We went a sweep at Chicago and won two in Boston, and then we lost the third. I think. So I think that's what it was. So it was like on the road for maybe, both of them. Yeah. And that was just that was crazy. So the Reds are hot, man. Yeah. Um. So I'm gonna be selling stock in undisputed. So I think this was happened before we did the podcast last week, but we didn't bring it up. Uh, so Shannon Sharp and Fox Sports reach a buyout agreement that will end his partnership with Skip Bayless on Undisputed. So the the legendary like you, you see it all over social media, them just yelling at each other. Uh, yeah, I love Shannon. Shannon's awesome. Um, but yeah, and, and so I'm just selling it because obviously it's going to go downhill for a little bit. Uh, but they're going to be done after the finals is over, and the three names that have been said the most. Uh, for taking Shannon's spot, Ryan Clark, LaShawn McCoy, and Nick Wright. I'd be fine with any of them. But Ryan Clark, stick to doing like a podcast because he, I mean, obviously it, it, it's good in certain situations. He brings race into every single topic possible. It'll just be like, so how, how does like LeBron getting swept affect his legacy? It's like, you know, well, as a, a white man would look at it, and it's like, dude, this this is not necessary. So, yeah. oh, if he just didn't bring in race and everything, he he's just a, he's good at what he does. But with Sean McCoy, he brings some energy. I would like that. Nick Wright, he would definitely get under Skip's skin <laughs> so fast. Like definitely, he gets under uh, Broussard or Broussard or whatever, whatever his name is. He gets under his skin quick. I know Skip would be heated. Yeah, but I mean, I, I'm excited to see who it is though, because it's just gonna be like. Kind of skips selection and Fox a little bit, but uh, I could see him doing Shady, Shady McCoy. I could see that. Yeah, that'd be uh, cool. Up and coming name, kind of in the in that industry. So yeah, uh, yeah, I'd be cool with it. Uh, I'm gonna be selling stock in this week. The Vandy baseball program. The rival well, man. Yeah, Vandy as a school, basically. I mean, imagine holding or hosting regionals and uh, losing. I think they only won one game too. Yeah. It's pretty bad. They were the sixth ranked team in the country. Yep. That's pretty bad. And they lose to Oregon and Xavier. Yeah. Those aren't even baseball schools, bro. Like, you can't even lose to somebody that's good. Yeah. Vanderbilt is just not looking up. Yeah. And, I mean, we talked about it throughout the year. We were like, oh, man, Vandy, like, fifth, sixth in the conference. And we were like, man, maybe they've lost their touch. Not Vandy of, of the past. And Yeah. I mean, it speaks to it. Not even going to the Supers. Couldn't imagine. Couldn't be us. The bat cats and the baseballs are going, so eat it, Vandy. Eat it. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, lastly, I, I do want to bring up this because this is like, I'm going to try to relate it to like, I don't know. I don't know if there's any terms that you can relate it to. But Live Golf, which I've talked about before, dudes went there. It's in the Saudi Arabian League. They literally just guaranteed guys like a billion dollars just to come play uh, Live Golf and PGA Tour are now merging to unify the game of golf. So it was going to happen eventually because there was no way in the world Live Golf would be able to continue to pay that, uh, pay those players that they would just lose all the money. So, but I guess it would just be like, I don't know. It it would have to be like rivals because it's rival leagues. So it's kind of different from like, I don't know. I guess it's when the NBA and ABA. Like got together, but in a way that's not even like, because it's just the live golf is like the bad guys. They're just like 
they play in a scramble and they just drink and smoke the whole time. And they're, yeah. just, they're only there for the money. And then the PGA guys are like these preppy guys, uh, collared shirts all the time, taking golf real serious. And it's just like you throw them together. <laughs> and so it, it'll be it'll be interesting. But uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, if you're one of those guys that went to live for a year and a half or whatever it was. It was smart because you just made a bag, Bank. and now you're getting back into where you actually want to be, anyways. So, it'll be interesting. There'll be some some drama. Phil Mickelson is now back, so I mean, I'm, I'm excited just to see the little drama here. Yeah, but, Dude, I gotta start swinging some clubs. Got to. Not a not a big golf guy, but uh, I need to <laughs> need to try try her out. We got you to fit at one time, so. Yep. Um, big putt putt guy though, so. <laughs> I have messed my up and putt putt. Right, we'll get you on the link soon. Um, but yeah, you got got any last things? Man, uh, there was a whole lot of rambling, but yeah, a lot of stuff, man. A lot of podcasts. Uh, hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, we're uh, doing some brainstorming behind the scenes, uh, trying to figure out some different stuff to do, um, to keep you know posting for you guys. So yeah, making the best content possible. So. Um, yeah, I guess it'll, it'll do it. So, uh, when you are watching this, Game 3 will be the day of, or when this comes out, uh, Game 3 will be happening Yeah, as you watch it. So, uh, enjoy Game 3, enjoy the rest of the finals. Um, hopefully there's still games going on by the time we do the next podcast. Hopefully it ain't over. Um, but yeah, and then also by the next podcast, the Super Regionals will be over. So we'll know mm-hmm. if either of our teams are going to Omaha. So y'all got Southern Miss. Southern Miss, yeah. We have LSU. So y'all, y'all are hosting, right? Mm, I can't remember. Something had to happen for us to host. We had to win, or not lose, which boy we did. But somebody else had to win or lose. Southern Miss won the... Somebody had to lose. Who was Southern Miss region? Mm. I can't remember. Ours was like that, too. It was like... Uh, we would be able to host if Oregon State beat LSU twice. Yeah. Was ours. But, Let me see real quick. Yeah, it gets confusing there. I would think y'all are hosting, but for the Cats, we're going to LSU. Nope. Uh, Southern Miss is hosting. So, whoever huh. team that had to win or lose, I guess, did the opposite of what we needed. Yeah. Well, Which is fine, though, because, like I said last week, I'm fine with not hosting, which, I mean, it would be cool, but, yeah, you know, every time we host, you know what I'm saying? Something happens, but, uh, yeah, so both our teams going on the road. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll know by this time next week uh, what our teams are doing. So, baseball, so. baseball's coming to the end. Uh, we were real hyped up about the postseason. But, yeah, thank you all. Uh, enjoy the finals, and uh, like, comment, subscribe. Um and yeah, let us know who y'all think will win the finals from here because now it's just 1 1, so it's even. Yep. Um, thank you all. Have a great rest of the week. Be safe and peace. See ya.